He's the head of pharmacy at Day Kimball. Okay. We're going to his hometown where his parents live, and we're going to work the protocol out on their house. We're in Cabo, which is a, a mountain village, and we're actually below the village because the uh, drive up there is too dangerous. We are here today to actually help the people. They mostly live in the mountain. They really have no access to health care at all. The citizens from Cabo are actually walking down the mountain to us. Some are being trekked down by Land Rovers, but a lot of them are walking. And these are people who have never seen uh, a doctor or a nurse or had health care before. When does that hurt? Does it? I want to know if it hurts after he eats, after he walks, when does it happen? We asked a lot of people when the last time they ate was, and some couldn't remember. Most oh, Nobody had, had said that they ate today. Not one person we asked said they ate today, even as the afternoon went on. And a lot of people couldn't remember the last time they ate. They did say they were hungry. There's been a lot of adolescents that are much, much smaller than they should be for for their age, um, and when you talk with them, they're hesitant to talk about it and hesitant to say the truth, but they're really not getting that much, much food each day. One kid said he's really not quite sure from day to day what the family's gonna be able to provide for him. Some parents feed their kids dirt. They don't have anything else to feed them, and then they can get the worms. I don't know if they've ever you know, been introduced to what a vitamin is or what food is. A lot of people I know that came in today um, haven't eaten in days. They weren't sure if they were going to have food for the next couple of days. Um, we were giving vitamins to these kids just because one vitamin is probably more, has more minerals than they're going to get in a week or a couple of weeks. We a lot of back eggs and I think this is consistent with the type of work these people okay, actually do in the area. They have to actually okay, plant the land and to make their food and they have to carry it in their back and their head and take it over the mountain. The situation with this gentleman over here okay, developing, um, it's a gentleman with a condition that we see frequently here where he's had a cough and weight loss and night sweats for the last two months um, and for the most part that sounds like it's tuberculosis and although we don't carry tuberculosis meds the question is, is he needs a chest x-ray he needs to be tested and then probably needs treatment so what we're going to do is we're going to ask Ginks to get involved with Dr. Davis's patient and try to figure out how we could coordinate the care of this gentleman who likely has tuberculosis. I didn't think we'd see the volume of people we saw today, so it was a real challenge for me to see up. We saw 500 people today at least. So we have other areas okay, from here, and we are not even close to the mountain. So what she is referring, she hope next time when we come around, 
even if we have to actually go to the back of a mule or walk to actually see with our own eyes okay, what she's referring to. Uh, because as you go further, it's actually getting okay, even worse because there is nobody at all. And those people cannot go to those places that we're talking about. Right. Think about it. Uh, about 60 something miles for someone to walk to come here. I was asking him if he goes to school, he says yes, what grade? He says fourth grade. Yeah. <laughs> and then he'll go from there to the pharmacy where he'll pick up some medicine for his blood pressure and his heart going fast. But when his head hurts, take one of these. Okay. Does he smoke? Or fume? No. So, salis. Respira? Right back. Yeah, dog. In the glasses. With the gracious. Doesn't mean you've done it forever. Yeah, for one minute. Yeah, she seems like she's totally putting the bread. Yeah, she is. has got fried. So here's the challenge. How do we say to her, this thing in her is bad? It's going to get the best of her, and she doesn't have much time left. But this woman, um, the end result was she probably has uterine cancer, um, endometrial, squamous cell, cervical, not quite sure, but there was a, there was a big, big mass in her belly. Um, she said that they did a scan, quote unquote, and thought there might be something wrong with her uterus, some fibrosis or something. Well, on exam, there's a big mass in there. It doesn't, it didn't. It doesn't appear benign to me for her to be that severely starved and emaciated, so it's almost certainly malignant. We were able to explain to the patient and to the two daughters that this is in fact bad. It's probably cancer. It's gonna get the best of her. What we're gonna do is help her feel better. We gave her some pills, Benadryl for sleeping, some Tylenol for her pains, gave her some gummy bear vitamins. She got a power bar from me and a granola bar from Ginks to help a little bit of nutrition, but her method, message to, that, to them was to get her to drink as much as possible, keep her comfortable, and that's what you have. And they actually appeared to be very, very grateful, said thank you and yes a lot, and smiled that they finally got the truth. That was a sense I got from them. They finally got the truth that something was not good, so. Okay. Okay, okay. bye-bye now. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Oh, Sean's, okay. <laughs> Can't really help her live, but, um, sorry. In, in some way, make her last days a bit more palatable, I guess. It's a group of survivors. They take care of each other, and they take care of themselves. I think people have a misperception about Haiti that it's incredibly dangerous. Um, there are parts of Port-au-Prince that are definitely dangerous, but the town that we're staying in, the town here, they are so grateful to us that they would never do us any harm. They would never come in between us and um, giving them medicine, and they're so grateful. So most people I know have a lot of empathy, but to actually uh, give up some time and come here and form a connectedness in a relationship and realize that, you know, we're all connected is, is awe-inspiring. When you put hands on someone and you get to intervene in that one little tiny shred of their life, it could be huge or not, I, but it's a gift for us, so that it, it totally changes you, totally changes you. People should travel to places where they they are hesitant to. They should travel to places that are completely out of their comfort zone because that will give them the ability to see the most, the best in people. It will really give them an ability to um, see what they haven't seen before in just other people and other people's faces and interactions. It'll give a completely new appreciation to what it means to be a human, I think.
Tiba-tiba.